we need to be able to identify the different coloring techniques. So this is starting duotone cut edge or hard edge. I'll call it hard edge. In animation, it's called cell shading. And what I'm doing is I'm just using my lasso with a one pixel feather and I'm deleting from a copy of my flat color that I've lightened using image adjustments levels. And it's really pretty easy because I'm just making shapes with my lasso. I'm not even using a tablet, I'm just using my mouse and then hitting delete. But it's difficult in the sense that I am kind of dividing up my local color shapes into more custom shapes. And sometimes those shapes help and sometimes they might distract, right? Now you don't need to be an expert in light logic. You just need to kind of pick the shadows that make sense. And so this wing is overlapping these tail flaps. So those are going to get cut out, right? And maybe I want to widen the shadow on this lower jaw. Now you could also just use your paintbrush and you could also use dodge and burn. And I'm going to be showing you those kind of techniques, but when you're doing hard edge duotone, the lasso really makes it consistent, even though you can't smooth out your lasso, right? Now this is a part of my coloring that I'm least happy with, this visor. I know it needs to be blue, but I don't love the um, just the flatness of it. So I know some use of duotone will help, but just doing a straight line I don't think will help as much as this kind of scalloping. And because we're making it in this sandwich, right, I'm not hurting my flat color at all. I'm just adding more variation on top of it. All right, maybe along the bottom here. Yeah, that helps a little. All right, and then to make these feel like they're rounded, maybe a little bit out of the edge here. Now, right now, this duotone is pretty subtle because I actually haven't done full duotone yet. I just have a lighter color added to all of my local flat colors. But what duotone is, is it takes that local flat color and it pushes it both light and dark. So let's see, maybe here I scallop it a little bit as well. And just like choosing the right local flat colors, finding the right duotone shapes can take a while but we're learning, we don't need to aim for perfection. Now, let's see. Maybe something like that. Now, if I separate these out, that's what it looks like with the offset behind it and the duotone colors. This is what it looks like with just the duotone highlights, right? That's what's left. That can help me spot little slivers that need to be erased. And I can even smooth it out.
for the most part, that's pretty clean. And now I turn back on my flat color underneath. And I turn off those highlights. So I just see my flat color. When it's behind black, it looks too dark. When it's outlined in white with the offset, it looks too light. So now what I'm going to do is duplicate the local flat colors again. <clears throat> and this time, turn on my highlights. And now I'm going to push those duotone hard edge towards the shadows. So now I call this copy shadows. I lock my highlights. <clears throat> and now I go to Image Adjustments Levels, and I'm going to push the mid-tone slider to the other side. <clears throat> Excuse me, to get those darks. So this is true duotone, where you're pushing the local color both lighter and darker in all areas. Now, that can be exaggerated and overdone, but then you just play with your opacities until it feels right both on the highlights and on the shadows. And then you might decide, oh, I just don't want it to be so fussy, so I'm just going to get rid of this. But you have to find the right one to erase that from. All right, so I kind of like that. So then I lock everything and I try it on the different backgrounds. How does that look on black? That looks pretty good on black. I can move my duotones into a folder together. But this is duotone hard edge, right? And that's basically what it looks like without it because I dimmed my local flat color a little bit. I don't need to. But that's the local flat color. That's with the duotones. And do I think that looks better? Yeah, I think that looks better. Does it look better on gray? Looks better on gray. Does it look better on white? Looks better on white. So this is a further technique right? Digital coloring. This is duotone hard edge. It's so simple to change hard edge to soft edge. And soft edge is the duotone approach we see a lot in digital graphics and imaging. So here we have duotone hard edge, duotone hard edge, but this is duotone soft edge, <laughs> where you blend between the lights and darks. This is duotone hard edge, this is duotone hard edge. This is duotone hard edge. This is duotone soft edge, where it gradates. So let's try that. So simple, now that we've made all those hard decisions for the hard edges, all I do is I duplicate that, that hard edged, all those layers. I'm going to rename it to soft edged. I'm going to merge the group. So it's all in one place. And then I turn off my hard edge layer. Let's turn it on gray so you can see it clearly. And then what do I do? I take that merged new copy. Again, we're just stacking things inside the sandwich. And I go up to filter. And this is the only filter I need you to know for the class. And I go to blur. So this is how you intentionally take away hard edges, take away focus. And I use Gaussian blur. So Gaussian Blur is this wonderful tool where it will blend out all those hard edges into a soft gradation. And I get to decide how much is appropriate. Now here's the trick. Maybe I like that in some areas, and maybe I like the hard edge in others. 
I can kind of use both of them in some ways. So maybe on the wing here, I want to get rid of that soft edge, so I just select it and delete from the soft edged. So now I have hard edged on the wing, but soft edged other places. Does that make sense? And maybe on the, the little turn key here, I want it to be a little harder. Maybe on these little feet, I want it, eh, I kind of like it slightly gradated. But maybe here I want it to be crisper. Maybe in the bolts I want it to be crisper. So you have a lot of control. Now, this is my favorite part of doing Duotone Soft Edged. I can also just use Dodge and Burn. They work really well for Duotone Soft Edge. So Dodge, just like I've used Dodge and Burn before, a large soft brush. This is where I can add highlights. Where do I think I need more highlight? Maybe on the top here, where it's catching a lot of light. So I just do the mid-tones, an exposure of less than 20, less than 30. I'm going to really brighten it up up here. Maybe really brighten it up on the back here. Now what's great about Dodge and Burn is it will never change your color. right? It will just give you lights and darks. Bless you. And eventually it will get to white if I keep dodging enough. Right? Maybe get a little bit more light inside that mouth. Have a grade 8. There's so much we can do with just do a tone coloring. It can be really effective. Okay, next, let's burn. But for burning, I might need to make another duplicate that I merge of the hard edges. And then call it soft edged. shadows and now I'm just going to burn those with a large brush 0% hardness low exposure less than 20 on the mid-tones and I get to start gradating and darkening where I think it needs it And my tendency with dodge and burn is always to overdo it. It's really hard not to. But that's why it's on a separate layer in your sandwich. So if you need to, you can also play with your opacity. And make it more subtle. So I'm going to take both of those down a little bit. And now we can see, put those into a folder. That technique is called Duotone Soft Edge. So that's without the hard edge underneath. This is all just soft edge. This is without the soft edge. This is just the hard edge. And then this is without anything. So again, you decide, is it better? Let's take that overall opacity down a little bit. Well, no. Yeah, I think it's better. Is it better on black? Yes. Is it better on gray? Yes. Is it better on white? Yes. So I'm getting there. Okay, now... <clears throat> I've used all those techniques. Now we move on to anything goes, basically, full spectrum.